Hi, I'm Steve Corey. I'm the Executive Director of Victory Service Dogs. And what we do at Victory is we uh, find uh, rescue dogs. Uh, we uh, get uh, dogs donated to us. Uh, breeders donate dogs to us. And we help our veterans get service dogs and the training that they need. Hi, I'm Sarah Simon, and I'm with Victory Service Dogs, a 501c3 nonprofit here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We primarily um, service veterans who need service dogs and find them their dog and help them get the training that they need at no cost to the veteran. What sets us apart is that we are a nonprofit um, and we work really hard to make sure that the veterans don't have any exorbitant costs. Most organizations that find service dogs for veterans, the dogs can range anywhere from $6,000 to $20,000. So we actually absorb any costs that the veterans may have um, so that they only have to pay like for dog food. Today we're going out to Callahan to pick up a couple dogs that were donated to us from, by Free German Shepherds. And Michael Woods has been waiting for a year for his service dog. Um, he had to put down Outlaw, his longtime service dog, he had to put him down um, just from old age. So when we heard that he needed a service dog, we, uh, actually it was almost the same day Freeze German Shepherds offered their um, puppies to us. German Shepherd breeder and we're here to test some German Shepherd puppies to see if they'll make the grade for service dogs. Well we're hoping that three of the puppies will pass the test today and uh, we'll be able to unite them with three of our veterans. My name is Lauren Fox. I'm the Executive Director of All Breed Rescue and Training. And today we're going to be doing some temperament assessments of puppies. We do those assessments at right around 49 days of age um, before they hit their first fear period. And what we're looking for is different reactions to um, handling, different reactions to uh, stimulus to see what personalities, what temperament uh, we might get in the puppies that might make them into good service dogs. Most of the puppies test well. I'm looking for dogs that are the most confident, um, that recover from uh, unpleasant stimuli, um, dogs that are curious, dogs that have some drive or some working ability, um, but are not too over the top. Um, so I'm kind of looking at the mid-range. I don't want the um, kind of less confident puppy, but sometimes the super overconfident or really drivey puppy is too much for service work. So I'm really looking for a middle ground. So, um, so these are today's litter. Yes. Those are next week's litter. Yes. Um, and no, these are all today's. Princesses oh. are over there. <laughs> I was I'm like, sorry, I wasn't even. No. So okay, these are all today's. And how many of these am I testing today? So there's one black and tan male. He's over here, the big guy. Okay. And then he was wanting the sable female, which is her. Okay. Um, but if she doesn't <laughs> test well, then a black and tan. In Female or male? Female. Okay. So all of those are the black and tan female. Okay. So however you, if you want to test those two. Yeah, I'm going to test first. those two first. And then yeah. you. Yeah. And then we'll decide on the others. It's okay. So this is the male. Okay. So you're going to, this is male. Do you have color names for them or no, any No, this kind of is Parlay's only black and tan male. Oh, so, so black and tan male name. is what you can put on there for name. And he's huge. Yeah, just yeah he's, you know. he's, a, he's, a he's the biggest puppy we've ever had. Oh, when we took him to the vet, they're 49 days. Yeah, last week he was 15 and a half pounds. Oh, 
All right, so I'm gonna have you shut this doll door for me. Get out. You're a big kid, aren't you? All right. Get a minute to figure out what's happening. What's up, kid? Yeah, check it out. Good boy. Oh. Like so. <laughs> no nope, startle response. He's not interested in uh, exploring it. But he didn't have a startle response either. How many signals is next? I haven't seen him. If I see him give calming signals, I'll just have you go. Oh, he just oh, yawned at me because I yawned at him. That was funny. One's turkey, bacon, and cheese. Yeah, mm he's -hmm. He's taking my whole hand in his mouth. <laughs> doesn't quite know how to take food from hands. He's gentle about it. He doesn't know where it ends, where or the treat ends. Rough handling, pulling tails, ears, pinching, hitting. All right. Yeah, you're a German Shepherd. You're, <laughs> you're going to say something about everything that I do. I the titties. 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 So much skin, dog. <laughs> He's fine with all of it. So he's willing to follow me for human running away. He doesn't put his teeth on me. And uh, running towards, he just holds his ground. He actually doesn't run the other way. <laughs> Reaction to visual stimuli, flag waving, blanket clapping, umbrella. Good on the on the upside down. You're silly. <laughs> oh, I got a hold you. What do you think about that? Oh, I'm torturing you. So for for Michael or Neil, you should probably touch base and see if they've got a size preference. Because this not? one's going to be, going to be big. It'll probably be bigger than Princeton. Yeah. Because Princeton was And how much is Princeton? 100. Yeah. Michael like, had Outlaw, who was a real big yeah. German shepherd. So whichever one of them wants the biggest dog 
is the one who should get this dog. Because he's going to be 120 pounds. Because we had a dog. <laughs> do either of them have physical disabilities? Neither of them do. It's been so long since I know with Michael. Yeah. Um, okay. Because whoever would have physical disabilities, I would go with this guy. Or for stability, it would be bigger. But so then I don't have a determining factor for myself about which. Well, Michael which was guy. thinking he was going to have physical disabilities in the future, but. So that would be yeah. a good possibility for him. Success. We were two dogs picked out. So Christine and Michael should be getting their puppies soon. Yeah, we love this place. Oh, it went great. They both tested very well. And interestingly enough, for the people that I'm testing for, the male tested, I think, exactly how I would have wanted him to test for Michael. And she, her personality, her innate temperament is about exactly what I would look for for Christine. So um, I was saying to Whitney, if I had to pick one, if I was only picking one, I might have picked the male for both of them if, if that was the option. If it was like you have to pick one of these two puppies only because he's a little bit more food motivated and that just makes them easier to train. But um, but their, their personalities are perfect for the people that they're going to, so I couldn't have asked for a better situation for them. Today we're going to go uh, to Aubrey Rescue and Training to interview Cammie. Her 16-year-old daughter needs a service dog very badly, so we're, we're hoping that we can uh, find the dog that she needs. We're going to first assess the dog that they already have um, to see if, if she'll fit the bill um, for what her daughter needs. Here at All Breed Rescue and Training, and we're going to interview Cammie McFall, and I believe they're bringing a puppy so that we can assess the puppy for her daughter's needs. So hope hopefully the assessment will be good, and her puppy will um, be able to be trained to become a service dog. I'm going to assess their current dog to see if I feel like that dog has at least a baseline uh, temperament to be able to go through the training. I don't actually care if the dogs know anything. And if they're a little bit shy, we can usually work on their confidence. What I need to see is that the dog can come and handle this environment at least minimally um, and that they're not going to be super shy or fearful of objects um, and have a, a reaction that's not going to be conducive to service dog training. Hi, my name is Cammie McFall, and I'm here today because I reached out to Victory Service Dogs um, because my daughter, she is 16 years old, and her name is Sakura, and her sweet 16th birthday wish is to have a service dog to help her with her condition. She's finally been diagnosed. Uh, she has dysautonomia POTS, which stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and it affects her heart rate and her blood pressure, and uh, a dog will greatly help her with her daily needs so we're here today uh, to have uh, Victory Service Dogs meet with our dog Luna and uh, we're hoping to help with the training. So just tell me a little bit about what your needs are. She just wants a, a service dog. Uh, since her kitten, She's finally been diagnosed last year but she's been suffering uh, for the past four years. She's been passing out, um, sometimes daily, but on average it's about once a month. One week it was three times a week. Um, and uh, so my daughter's confidence, of course, has gone down. Uh, she, we've had to homeschool her, so we have to go to school. Um, and so her, her, 
goal is to become more independent. And she feels that she had a service dog to help her with her daily needs, um, you know, fetching her water, helping her with her stability when she has to walk. Um, she feels weak often and dizzy. Um, that's part of the dysautonomia condition that she has. In the condition that she has, um, what physically causes uh, that? What happens in her body? It's basically the blood leaves the brain. It just comes down, and then the heart rate is working much harder to keep that blood flow going. So you have a lot of blood pooling in the legs, and it causes, um, they call them potsies. Um, it causes them to become dizzy, have brain fog, um, she'll faint, and then um, she'll go into like little spasms or seizure-like symptoms. And it can last five minutes, it can last four hours. So I'm hoping she'll work out, but if not, we have an emotional support letter already from the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so. so if she is not exactly what we're looking for to do the work that you're describing, um, how would your daughter feel about that? Um, well, it was my choice to purchase the dog. It wasn't my daughter's, like, I want this dog, because I surprised her mm -hmm. with it. Um, but again, I, I know I, I shouldn't have Oops. went on a whim, but I don't know. I just know that... What's the emotional bond between this dog and your daughter? Well, we've only had her for about two weeks. Okay. So, even if she's not exactly what we're looking for, we can, at that point, then we need to make a decision. Either we're going to do the work and, and do the best we can with what we have with her confidence, um, or we find a dog that's already a little bit better matched, and that dog gets along with other dogs. So she has, I know, I'm so mean, she has 100% of her adult teeth. She's between five and six months. sooner than later, before she's 18, and this would not be my choice. Mm. Can we make her into a service dog in the next two years, <coughs> based on her age? We probably could certainly try. But it's not going to happen. This is not a dog that she's going to be able to start to take out after six months of training. Mm. Great pleasure to meet with them and uh, to do an evaluation on Luna. And uh, yeah, we're just looking for the. Come here, come here, come say hi. It went okay. It's not my favorite um, situation when I meet a dog that a family has pre. Um, selected to be a service dog and I'm looking for very specific traits in that dog and in this particular case that dog has some really nice qualities absolutely but uh, has some confidence issues and that's key for a service dog I don't care if they're ill-behaved they jump up even the mouthing wasn't a big deal to me um, confidence is key in having a service dog whose job is to help another human feel confident in the world it's not the other way around so that key ingredient was missing and that's really hard to create once a dog is past five months of age. So, um, could have gone better. Uh, and so we'll see what the family decides to do. We're on our way to deliver Michael's outlaw number three. It's a very exciting day. 
Uh, Michael's been waiting for a year now, and we're just um, thrilled that we can help him. And he's been calling me almost every day, um, making sure he's still getting his puppy. Michael Woods is a Vietnam veteran who has some disabilities that he you know is wanting to work through um, primarily PTSD and he wants to have a dog that helps him along with that um, he has had a dog probably for the last 15 years My name's Michael Woods. Um, I'm a hearing impaired veteran. Um, when I take my hearing aids off, I'm stone cold deaf. When I uh, put my dog down a year ago, I've been isolated. Uh, you can't sleep because you don't know what's going on around you. You can't take a shower, so I've been waiting for this dog for a year. It means that I'm going to have my freedom back. I'm going to be able to sleep comfortably and all through the night. It means I'll be able to take a shower without having to hurry up to worry about who's coming in the house or what's going on. It's going it, to, it's a companion too. I live alone, you know, so it's, it's a, you know, somebody, something to come home to or with. It's a, it's a good thing. My name is Eric and I'm Michael's son. This means the world to my dad. Um, when he lost his dog, his last dog, it was like he lost a part of himself. Um, and this is giving him back that part. Victory service dogs, these guys are great. Uh, they went to great pains to make sure I got the right animal. Uh, they've stayed in contact all through the, the two-month waiting period for the service dog. Uh, and Laura and their trainer is just a spectacular individual. They're good folks. The first outlaw, I think, was a genius, a human being in a dog costume. Um, he was a bright animal. I mean, I could tell that dog to do anything. I mean, like from crawl on the floor, bang, play dead. Um, but they've all been able to do that trick. Um, the new outlaw, the last outlaw, he, uh, he was a rescue, a uh, quarter wolf. And uh, he, was a, he was a dear boy. He was just one of the sweetest animals I've ever met. Just always, you know, right there by your side. And he, had, he naturally realized that I couldn't hear. He knew when I he heard the squeak of the hearing aids that I, my hearing was gone. And he took care of me from that point on. This will be Outlaw the Third. Today we are donating this dog to Michael Woods, Vietnam veteran. Freeze German Shepherds graciously donated him to us and we're looking forward to changing Michael's life with this guy. Saliva or you? I've got a little parcel. Ah. It's gonna be okay. It really will, I promise. You know, you just look like just exactly like the first one, sort of. You do. Not so much like the last one though. It'll be okay. It will, it'll be okay. If it wanted to be with my mom for like an hour. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy. I went awesome. Just uh, Michael Woods is happy with outlaw number three. Um, I think they're going to do great together.
it's uh, it's going to be a big help for him. Looking for looking forward to good reports. All right, guys. We're see you later. Bye. Victory Service Docs, you can go to our website, which is victorysd.org. We also have a donate button there. We really appreciate any donations that anyone would like to make because we do provide these dogs at no charge to the veterans. So, you know, your help is very much appreciated to help these guys live a normal and happy life with a dog.